If you just fix these five YouTube mistakes, here's what can happen. This is the biggest I've ever had my channel to the point where I've had almost 500,000 views and 2,000 subscribers within the last 28 day mark period. This is my friend Steve, and despite the current state of his channel, once upon a time, it took him an entire year to get his first 150 subscribers. So what exactly are these five mistakes and how did fixing them have such a drastic impact on Steve's channel? Well, I sat down and asked him just that. Early on, 2017, just decided, you know, I see people YouTube gaming, they're just playing games, sharing it with the community. And that was always something that was intriguing to me. Just like, well, I like gaming. I, you know, want to share this with other like-minded people out there. So let me just play whatever game that's trending at the time or whatever I'm having fun with. I didn't have any plan, no research, no format. I was just click record on my Elgato. That's why early on I, I had no success and I didn't really have any expectations because I didn't know what I was doing. It was just a hobby picking up into, but slowly into 2018, Madden 19 came out and I pick it up yearly, I always played. I was like, you know, it'd be fun to record a franchise series with one of my favorite teams and just post that, let's see if it's any fun. And finally, after a year, you know, it clicked to the point where I've had almost 500,000 views and 2000 subscribers within the last 28 day mark period. Anybody right now, if you come in and you are passionate about it, you're willing to put in the time and effort and research, you can see results like I have and even probably bigger. Okay, now let's walk our way through what you feel are the five biggest mistakes that stopped you from getting views in the beginning that most of the people watching this are probably making too. The first big one was just creating content blindly. Couldn't stress the importance of having at least a game plan and doing some research. And I didn't do that for at least a year. I created content blindly without looking at trends, without looking at competition, without doing any research. And it showed <laughs> my content wasn't great. It didn't stand out. The viewership wasn't where I probably thought it should have been. And a lot of that can go down to just not having any game plan. So true. Pay attention to the community and uh, listen to what they want because more than anything, they're gonna help you grow. And if it works, great. If it doesn't, move on to the next idea. Mistake number two, and this is what I think slowly was starting to kill my channel, honestly. I did episodic series format, where I would take from episode one, the start of a season, and I would let it run dozens of episodes, potentially like early on, I had several series that went over a hundred episodes each. I became complacent with that, and the channel started to drop a little bit because yes, people are gonna get bored of that, and there's always new competition. And there's always people that are continuing to evolve within your niche. And if you're just doing the same thing time and time and time again, they're going to click off. They may stay subscribed, which is fine. But when your new video posts, they may not click on it because they know exactly what you're going to do. You're going to just flounder and you're not going to grow. And that's what happened to me. So my biggest thing would just say, continue to evolve. Try not to get stuck. With sports gaming content, I always saw drop off after a season ended. So during that time, I uh, became inconsistent with my audience. I've established my channel as sports gaming content. And then during off season, all of a sudden I'm playing Resident Evil 2 remake and I'm doing a Let's Play series of that. And then I all of a sudden make a video essay about Alan Wake or something, you know, it's something I'm passionate about and clearly, yeah, I love those things, but that doesn't mean my audience is. So true, yes. Whatever your value is that you are giving to your audience, it's important to stay consistent within that. It doesn't mean you can't explore within that niche, but don't stray too far if you can help it. But once you've grown to a certain point to like a Markiplier, Jacksepticeye or Mr. Beast, they're there for you. That's something I didn't do a very good job of in the first three years of my channel. It's hard sometimes to shut off creator brain and just play for fun. And that's something that I've had to do. All that variety stuff that I used to do that was inconsistent within my niche that hurt my channel throughout the last five years. I've now learned that it serves a place, but it's for personal enjoyment off camera. Mistake four goes to not researching what's working within your niche. You can find ways to capitalize on trends by implementing that maybe into a, a series concept. And I, I've done this several times, even most recently, I found a trend that was within the niche and I capitalized on that with making content. And that came from looking and utilizing tools like vidIQ, utilizing Google Trends, things that I never did in my first really three years of YouTube. And I've learned over the years that if I want to find success and I want to see what is and what isn't working, I have to become addicted to research. Let's say you're a Fortnite gamer and they just released chapter four. And you're like, well, there's no way I can create a Fortnite channel when it's still one of the biggest games and it's very, very saturated. And that could be a really scary thing. Well, you can find ways, okay, what gaps are these big Fortnite gamers not reaching? Maybe there is a cheeky little spot somewhere where you can snipe or whatever. And that's something I had to learn was put in the research, see what's working within the niche and within the other niches around, and then find the gaps where I can uh, capitalize on an audience that is hungry for something. Number five, I used to just 
have bare bones videos, meaning I didn't edit very much and they were extremely long form content. Was it easy on me as a creator? Absolutely. I was able to pump out content, but was that good content? Was it quality content? And the big answer that I've learned over the years is no, it wasn't. So I became a student and I've started learning how to become a good video producer, uh, which I think is a big key for any content creator. So I had to learn to make engaging content that would keep viewers engaged, tuned in, and hopefully roll into another video on the channel and then keep them in the spiral, just watching, watching, and watching. But that had to come from getting out of my comfort zone and spending a whole lot more time on the computer here in my video editing software. Something we haven't talked much about is you actually joined my four digit challenge. I wanna ask, did you find that helpful at all in your journey? Absolutely. And I think for me, there's a whole lot of great content within the course um, that I I'm sure will resonate differently with every single creator. But for me, finding ways to communicate within the community and be a voice has helped me a lot. It's rewarding even to me, you know, 22,000 subs and so forth. It, I, I feel like it's going to help me push forward into the 50 Ks and hopefully into a plaque where I can get to hundred K. I think no matter who you are, whether you're just starting a fresh brand new channel at zero subscribers, or even if you've passed hundred thousand subscribers, there's value there. If you can spend the time with it. If anyone's wondering, you can learn more about the 40 digit challenge down below. Basically it's a step-by-step -step challenge where each day you'll pretty much be given a new specific lesson that you need to learn to help you get better on YouTube. And then throughout the entire process, you have the support of jumping on a call with me every two weeks to ask any questions face to face and also access to a private Discord server that's very active and full of individuals who you can network with, learn from, and there's even a channel specifically dedicated to feedback. So you can post your videos, thumbnails, and get feedback from people who actually know what they're talking about. If you are interested in signing up for the four digit challenge, there's a link down below. But if you actually implement what I teach you and for some crazy reason it doesn't doesn't work for you, I don't want your money. So it's completely risk-free. Gobotch, thank you so much for your time. <laughs> and I hope to see you joining us in the footage at challenge very soon.